Archbishop Aquila, German Synodal Path repudiates the deposit of faith. Archbishop Samuel Aquila of Denver has written again to the head of the German Bishops' Conference reiterating that the country's synodal path challenges, and even repudiates, the deposit of faith. The synodal path does not simply address structural concerns, it challenges, and in some instances repudiates, the deposit of faith. Documents of the synodal path cannot be read in any other way than as raising the most serious questions about the nature and binding authority of divine revelation, the nature and efficacy of the sacraments, and the truth of Catholic teaching on human love and sexuality, Aquila wrote in a May 2nd letter, obtained by CNA, to Bishop Georg Batzing of Limburg. Over the course of the last year, the Denver Archbishop has engaged in an open epistolary back and forth with the Church in Germany over its synodal path, which advocates sweeping changes to Church teaching. He previously released a 15-page commentary in May on the synodal path's first text, saying it puts forward untenable proposals for changes to Church teaching. More recently, Aquila was among the drafters of an April 11th open letter that warned the synodal path may lead to schism. Signed by more than 70 bishops when it was released, the letter has now garnered 101 episcopal signatures. The most recent signatories include Cardinal Joseph Senzikian, Bishop Emeritus of Hong Kong, Cardinal Camillo Ruini, based in Rome, and Archbishop Leo Cushley of St. Andrews in Edinburgh, Scotland. You can view the full letter with the updated list of signatories here. Additional prelates may request that their names be added to the letter by sending an email to episcopmnd2022 at gmail.com. The map below shows the nationalities of the signatories. The Archbishop reiterated that there can be no concordat of mutual acceptance between the truth of divine revelation and Catholic doctrine, on the one hand, and the distorted anthropology of today's advanced secular culture, which promotes an increasingly dysfunctional sexuality, on the other. There is nothing salvific in blessing destructive thought and behavior. To surrender to the zeitgeist is not a matter of reading the signs of the times, it is a betrayal of the gospel. The only way we Christians will bear fruit today is if we stay attached to Christ, and teach with charity and love, with a tenderness that will accompany people out of their brokenness, sin, and wounds. Genuine synodality is not a parliamentary process but a matter of listening to the Holy Spirit who will keep us in the truth and remind us of what Jesus teaches. Catholics all over the world will be impacted by the synodal path's outcome. And what we have experienced in our own dioceses is much different than what is being proposed in Germany.